What's up, everybody? I'm Mason, a.k.a. Amiglos. And I'm Kyle, a.k.a. Mr. Space Feeder, and today we have our guest. That would be me, Bobby, the Nintendo Guru. All right, and this is Touch Base Podcast, level 12. So this week we've got Bobby, aka the Nintendo Guru, and I caught him right as he's drinking. That's okay. So, yeah. I'm a professional. I can drink and talk. I'm good like that. Don't worry. You, you're okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Bobby, uh, why don't you just give us a little shout out, plug for yourself and what you do, and kind of explain who you are. You've been on the show twice already, so yeah. I think actually wasn't I? I think I was the Geek Guru before when I was on the show. And you were, you were, yeah, and I did like a name change and a brand change and all that stuff. And and so those that don't know me, I was formerly the Geek Guru, uh, changed up to Nintendo Guru just because I have a passion for Nintendo and I kind of wanted to speak more about Nintendo when I did my YouTube stuff. So I have a YouTube channel uh, called the Nintendo Gurus. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Nintendo Gurus, all that stuff. You know, that's and I got a few podcasts. And yeah, a few podcasts is putting it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's three. That's a few. Come on, man. And you're a guest host on like I do at guess least a lot. like two or three podcasts a week. It seems <laughs> it was funny. My wife earlier she says to me, "Do you have anything to do tonight?" And I was like, "Well, I'm going to do a podcast tonight." She just shakes her head. I'm like, what? She's like, you are such a podcast whore. She's like, you would do it. <laughs> I'm like, I love doing podcasts, man. What do you want? <laughs> All right. So we've been gone for uh, for a few weeks. Most It's actually mostly me that's been gone. Um, I've been traveling for my second job is probably the best way to explain it. Um, so about once or twice a year, I travel to the Gulf Coast. Uh, to lead people around to visit carnivorous plants and other rare and unusual plants in habitat. Um, most of this stuff is not, like, in- endangered, um, because, you know, you don't want to risk taking random people to see endangered stuff, but a lot of it is rare, and there goes my cat. Um, and so the the plants I take them to see are really cool. I'll put up, like, a quick photo or something. Um, that was obnoxious. I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> the, I, the forgot I, put the, I forgot to put the laundry in. That probably wasn't <laughs> the brightest idea. So. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'll put some pictures up from my trip, just some brief little things. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, we go see carnivorous plants in the wild. We see, like, pitcher plants, Venus flytraps, uh, which are not native to the Gulf Coast, but there's introduced populations, things like that. Um, and it's, like, a 10-day trip, and people pay a lot of money to do it, and I lead them around, and I also drive it. And uh, it's a really fun time, but it is exhausting. And so I had zero time whatsoever to record podcasts, edit them, whatever. So that's why I was gone and why we didn't record. And I'm sorry it took us like, or it took me like three and a half weeks to get episode 11 up when we recorded it like three and a half weeks ago. Um, but hopefully we'll be back on a more regular schedule. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, with that, glad to be back. Hopefully we'll be back to normal things now. Um, yeah. I don't have an excuse. I was mental health for me. I was <laughs> sick. So that's a problem. Sorry. Yeah, but you know, but it wasn't your fault that we weren't recording. Like you could have done something without me if you really wanted to. But nah, that's not the same. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Boring. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get right into it. So we're gonna start with uh, uh, our custom of the week. Uh, we're gonna feature AK Shops uh, Samus Me Fighter that she literally just posted a few minutes ago. Um, it's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, it um, is. Detail. Actually, I want to feature two because there's another one I really, really love that came out recently, and that was Kick-Ash's Kylo Mewtwo. Yeah, man. Oh, I was just looking at that yes. Yeah. Because I'm a huge Star Wars fan on top of Nintendo, and so we got AK Shop's uh, Mii suit, or Samus Me suit, which is, yeah. you know, badass. And the detail on the base is really cool with, like, the rocks and, like, the vegetation yeah. and all that. So she did a great job with that. Um, and then uh, Kick Ash's Kylo Mewtwo, which 
The one thing I wish it had was an LED in the sword. See, um, of course. Of or, course. Sorry, I, Always I, trying to plug your work, man. Always. <laughs> Just let it go. Right? <laughs> He's not wrong, though. That'd be bad. <laughs> Yeah, but... No, it would be cool. I'm just kidding. It would be cool. It would be cool if it lit up. Yeah, yeah. No, but at the same time, like, like that, her work is awesome. So yeah, it did was awesome. Yeah, so make sure you check out AK Shop um, on Twitter and Instagram and all that, and Kickash too. They both do some really awesome work. Yes. So uh, with that, I don't. I guess we'll kick it to Kyle with some uh, Amiibo news because it's been quite a few weeks, so we've got all sorts of stuff. Oh, yes. Obviously, a nice and easy way to start it is um, just talking about stuff that's going to get released. Like, we want to recover that the Splatoon Amiibos are going to be coming out on July 8th, the new ones. Um, I noticed Japan got a bundle, actually, where you can get the console with the Squid Sisters of the game. And you were hoping it was going to come west, but no update on that yet. Um, also, let you know that the new version of Isabelle is going to be coming out. Anybody got a date on that? June that 10th, right? You're talking about the summer outfit or the... Yes! Yeah, it's June 10th. Okay. So, remember. next week. So, yeah, yeah same, same day, of course, the Kirby ones. Yeah, yep. those are coming out that day, too. So, that'll okay. be sweet. And the Animal Crossing Series 4 cards, as well. Yes. So, are people really still collecting them things? Like I never bought a single pack, yeah, so... I, I, no. collected, I collected Series 1, I got into Series 2, and then I was just like, no, I'm done. I can't. It's a lot. It's a it, lot. You know what? You don't realize it. At first... I thought it was it was more fun, it, it, and it was. It was more fun. But then I realized I'm spending a lot more money on these things than I am Amiibo trying to collect them all, you know? And it's mm-hmm. just, it's nuts. And there's not a lot of use for them, too, which kind of defeats the purpose afterwards. Yeah, there's, there's so, like no use at all. So that's no fun. I, I kind of, I, um, I, I think I say this every time we have a video, I'm, I'm really waiting for the Pokemon company to wake up and do a card lineup because oh. then they have to make a million amiibo. The cards would be all they need to do to cover as much as they want. Agreed. And just It's going to kill our bank accounts, but it's going to be really sweet. Yeah, and just like, well, okay, we're, we're, we're jumping ahead a little too much. But, yeah, yeah, no, well, so we're, later on we're going to be talking about the future of amiibo, and that's why we have Bobby on. But uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, so let's finish up with some news first and then uh, do our amiibo functionality. So. So, the big, so the big one is obviously Monster Hunter is coming out with a line of Amiibo themselves that um, the company made. Uh, right now it's just three that we saw. It's the two dragons with the riders. Um, pardon me if I use way too vague of terminology. I am not educated in the Monster Hunter department. I've tried playing it. It's not my, it's not my forte. Um, but the Amiibo look amazing. Uh, compared to the base, they're huge. Like, in my opinion, yeah. they, they yeah. look big. I'm a, to I'm a little worried about. they're going to be, like, not stable. I was a little concerned, too. But if it's light plastic, if they're not necessarily hollow, but they're not, like, heavy, like, um, what, who, who was it that I'm trying to... Like, Ganondorf is very heavy. Um, yeah. If it's a lighter material, like a Pikachu or, um, ooh, not KK, I just picked him up and he's heavy as crap. Well, Pikachu is um, actually hollow on the inside, so... Oh, really? Yeah, Pikachu's got, like, a nice hollow cavity... As is like Kirby and uh, Jigglypuff, they're hollow on the inside. So I saw someone say basically that these are kind of like the Good Smile mm-hmm. figures. That was actually and, me. Oh, was it? Okay, okay. I saw it today <laughs> on Twitter, right? You were talking about on Twitter today. Yeah, they look like Good Smile, like Nendoroid yeah. or um, fit like all those those collectibles. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because you were like, I don't know that I want them, and I, or you weren't a fan, and I was like, you know, you need them. I just don't play Monster Hunter, but I will own them. I'm a big dragon yeah. person, so I was like, yeah. that alone is going to sell me on those. Yeah. I'll probably they're, own the cat character too, because like they're awesome. They are awesome, and it's it, I think that like it's I like the, the I just like the way they look. Like the style of them is dead on, spot on. Like I really think they did a good job with these, and I hope it. I hope that it sells through the roof because I want other companies to do this too. Yes. You know, like it would be fun to get third parties involved mm-hmm. in this. And I know that Nintendo doesn't have a lot of third party support at the moment, but they are talking to other companies and, and they're trying to get some garner some support for the NX. But I'd love to see moving forward like us to start getting, you know, it'd be cool to see Sega put out a Sonic line, you know, it'd be Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. I'm a hardcore I'm, Sonic fan. Like I would be all about that. Yeah. You and Toby yeah, I mean, I, so I my first game that I really loved uh, was Sonic 3D Blast, um, and the original Sonic on the Sega Genesis six pack. 
Um, but then I very quickly was given a NES with a zapper and given Mario slash Duck Hunt, and that quickly took over my life. Um, and so, you know, I was a Sonic fan for a while, and I still love Sonic, but I've honestly, I've never beaten one of his games or one of the games that just... I remember being 12 and playing way too much Sonic Heroes, which is definitely not even up there as, like, one of the better ones, but I played there, it a lot. You know, Adventure Battle 2 is the classic staple, even though it is dated pretty poorly. But you're, but you're okay, because it's really not a good Sonic game ever. So it doesn't matter, you know, which one. <laughs> it's all mediocre across the and board. As long as you didn't play 06 on PlayStation or Xbox, right? Like, we're set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, to jump back to Monster Hunter, one of the biggest reasons I was like, this looks like a good smile figure was now the images they released where it comes with a base display where you can put other items and there's additional things that go with it to add to the collectible feature of the Amiibo themselves, which is another thing, like you said, I hope other companies see that and they're like, we should do that too, because I love that. That's the whole reason I own Nendoroids. Like, yeah. the fact that you can keep on customizing them and throw other items on them, and it's, it's well, fun. So, one thing I wish Nintendo would allow third parties to do is get, or not necessarily get rid of, but change the shape of that little tiny circular base. Yeah. Like, or be able to cover it up. Like, yeah. like, I know when the Wolf Link Amiibo came out, yes, that's Nintendo, but like... Instead of having the rock sitting on top of that stupid little circle, have the ro- the circle inlaid within the rock. It would make any chance of me customizing it impossible. But you know what? I'd rather it look better than me be able to customize it. Right. Yeah, I've said that all along. I felt like that mm-hmm. that was a missed opportunity with them. Where on that, they could have done the two rocks, and that's fine. But on that third rock, it should have been another rock. Where that third, the the, the, the third the piece coming down the base should have been a third rock. I feel because I felt like it just took away. You know, I understand you're trying to keep them all across the board looking the same, but I just felt like you had a moment to, like, really do something different, and you did But I don't like the fact that they all look the same. Like, I was, it, they would have been better off, I think, if they, every line had a different base and they were more unique to their base, because they're still Amiibo. The base doesn't make them as, as much as the chip makes them Amiibo. The base necessarily yeah. doesn't. I feel like Smash should have stayed a circle the way it was, and that was yeah. perfect. And then when they went to Mario, they should have done something different. Like yeah, a square star. base to look like a... Or a star. Or a star. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah or that. Um, but the circular base was good for the Smash symbol. That made sense. But ever since then, they could have done a thousand other things with the other well, one. And I, I feel like Amiibo... Like in, this is me kind of speculating on how Nintendo came up with this, but I feel like they're like, let's make these figures that come to life in the game, you know, sort of like Skylanders, but it's for Smash. Well, we've always had this concept of these are trophies that are some figures that this kid had in his room coming to life and fighting in a game, so let's make those actual figures. And then they're like, oh, wow, these sold really well. Let's make another line. And they kind of just like, well, we already have that circular template. Let's just keep using that instead of innovating. Like, honestly, do like the, the brick or, like you said, like the Power Star or like the POW block or something for the Mario line and just change it up. Like, they, I feel like they were like, well, we already have the circle template for the other thing. Well, we don't want to like, pay for those molds. Like the, like the, like the 8-bit Marios. Like, the, that's a pipe, a warp pipe. That's, I think that's one of the most ingenious ones, you know? Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. totally different, you know? They could have done a lot, and they, I, you know, like I said, I just feel like they dropped the ball. They, they had a great opportunity to do something different and change things up, and they just didn't, and I felt like that sucks. All right, just so, hoping they do. Yes. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for Amiibo news. Uh, yeah. yeah, so don't forget Kirby and Animal Crossing Series 4 cards and Summer Isabel release June 10th. This will probably be going up a couple days before that, so uh, make sure you go. Uh, don't stand in line. Don't camp out. There's <laughs> no reason to do that anymore. Um you, I wasn't I wasn't taking a chance of, not, of missing Waddle D. Because you never know. <laughs> well, it's the first time, man. That's I really hope you're joking. I pre-ordered it. Hey, no, that's I pre ordered it, man. I wasn't <laughs> going to, and I said, you know what? This will be the day that the, the hunters come back out in full force and I don't get my Waddle D. Oh, oh yeah, from Waddle D. That's why. Yeah, only because the last series that they released was Animal Crossing, which they mm-hmm. put out way too many of, so maybe yeah. they're going to get careful and put out too little that's, this time. Yeah, oh, and especially no, no. with the know. news, especially with the news of coming off the ba- off the, the the back of Disney Infinity collapsing, they basically said that like they put out characters 
that they shouldn't have put out a lot of, and they did, and they're just sitting on the store shelves. So yeah. yep. Nintendo, in the beginning, it drove a lot of people nuts, but they were doing the right thing, I, I feel, coming out the gates. I just because it, it solidified it, gave made them strong, you know, and, and now they're in a situation where, you know, like you say, the Animal Crossing ones are just sitting on the shelves. They may start scaling back moving forward. Yeah. Well, and and from a sales perspective, that's the way to do it. I mean, they they obviously you don't want to flood the store shelves because, for you know, Disney Infinity prime example. It's why you don't flood, you don't oversupply. You want to undersupply. Yeah, you always want demand above supply. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, like you said, Bobby, it it just that's what screwed over Disney Infinity. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen to Amiibo as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think anybody does. Um, and I think we all, especially in this podcast, really just want Nintendo to do well, and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Um, and if that means that I have to go stand in front of a store on like a Friday morning at like six a.m., I'm down for it. I mean, me too. Like I, I, I honestly miss it. Exactly. Yeah. We had a community that met every time for release. Yeah. We all played yeah. tournaments, and now we we just chat once in a while. I don't know why we just don't get together. I mean, we're too lazy for that. We need a release day. Yeah, yeah. and like. <laughs> And most right. of the people that were going to do that are, you know, nerdy shut-in people, like, that don't <laughs> come outside as often as they probably should. Like, mm. I'm not bashing it because I'm one of them. Like, yeah. you know... I live in this basement, dude. We don't have uh-huh. windows down here. I live in this basement most of the time. We don't have windows down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, like, but, you know, that was your opportunity to go out and meet people and, yeah. like, make friends and... Listen, I, I have met... This uh, this Saturday, I'm going out after I do the podcast with my buddy Miguel, and I met Miguel on my very first hunt to go. We we both met getting Rosalina, and we've been friends ever since. And we go out every now and again, and we'll go like we're we're into World of Nintendo now, so we'll go out and hunt those and stuff. And it's like because there's no rhyme or reason with those things; they just pop in the stores wherever. So you have to go to the stores and try to find them. So. It gives us that little bit of a charge, like we got when we were doing the amiibo hunting, and, and yeah. you know, and I can give you, like, I can go through my phone and pull out a list of people that like that I've met that are like solid people that I never would have met if it wasn't for amiibo. So, all right, I so think it's a different thing. So I kind of came up with a, a quick little detour segment that I'd like to do because Bobby's here, and that is missed opportunities with Nintendo regarding amiibo. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I, um, so one of my so one of my podcasts is called If We Ran Nintendo, and I do it with Sean Capri. And Sean was, awesome. you know, we did we did ask. Thank you very much. We did ask Sean to come on, but he was you know too busy doing his other podcast because you know he's as bad as I am. But so essentially, what it is is it's like you know we we, we sit down and we pick up topics and we talk about what we would do if we ran Nintendo. This this opportunity is a perfect thing of like what we would do if we ran Nintendo, and I feel like, you know, for me the number one is the Animal Crossing ones. They dropped the ball big time with that. I think they launched them too soon. They should not have come out yet. They should have waited until they had a game to coincide with it. Um, or well, they did. They did have a game, Bobby. No, in stop. fact, they had two. So you you know what he's trying to say, man. Stop. It, you know what I'm saying. A oh. Wii U New Leaf is what he's yes. getting. At. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, you fine, can, I get Okay, it. look, at, if they would have taken Happy Home Designer <laughs> right, and implemented Happy Home Designer into New Leaf, HD graphics, slap it on the Wii U, it would have sold like gangbusters, and everybody would have been happy. But the, you take that garbage that they put out, you know, with Amiibo Festival. You know what, I, I'm being a little hard on Amiibo Festival. It's not the worst game in the world. It's 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 you know it it has a run for it's good run for the money, but it's not the worst. There are some, there, there I can't some help money. but laugh just because every freaking podcast we just bash that that poor game. You know it's it's a, I've said I said this before. I feel like the mini games. If they would have taken the mini games that were on there and merged them with the actual board game, it might have been a better game. You know they have a trivia contest that's in that game. It's a lot of fun. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, that game is that's a cool little thing. I feel like they just messed up by like separating the mini games. And not only that, like there's a survival island that you have to get off the island after you use the card for. That game's actually fun too. You know, you have to get off the island so many turns, you have to find like logs and and different things to like build your raft to get off the island. 
there are some cool things with the mini games they could have done. They could have done that stuff. I don't know. Like if they would have put some trivia questions in, they, there's just a lot they could have done with it. Anyway, the game's garbage. Yeah. So, all right. So if, Animal if Crossing. They would have, so for me, Animal Crossing. If they would have taken the amiibo, implemented them into a new leaf style, or just a new amiibo game, or a new Animal Crossing game, and do where you're scanning KK Slider, you get five five exclusive songs that you can't get anywhere else in the game. Scan in Isabel. You get five public works projects that you wouldn't get anywhere else. You know, scan in Rossetti and he gives you something. Scan in, you know, Tom Nook and he gives you five exclusive pieces to your house. Kicks gives you different shoes. Like, they could have run the gambit with all these things. They would have sold Amiibo like crazy because you're giving the Amiibo hardcore fans something to actually do with them and it would have... It, it would have been a win-win all across the board, I feel. Yeah. Um, so what I'm wondering is if... Uh, I've actually never played Animal Crossing, not because I have anything against the game. Mm -hmm. um, I just... Honestly, my backlog of games is so large at this point, and when I was growing up, I just didn't... wasn't really interested in that um, when it came out originally in, like, New Leaf. You know, yeah. All that. But um, eventually, I'll probably give it a shot, and I'm probably going to absolutely love it, and, you know... But we'll see. When, when I get there, through my... 20 plus games on backlog, um, but with Animal Crossing, what I know it's a big thing. Like getting, you want certain villagers to come to your town and live there, right? So, so essentially, it's it's a simulator game. Basically. Yeah, it's like a life simulator. Yes. Yeah. So you're there, you do your daily tasks. But the nice thing is, you can do whatever you want to do. So you got a museum there. You can fill it with bugs. You can fill it with fish. You can fill it with fossils. So you run around town each day, either trying to collect bugs or fish. The fish come out certain times of the year, certain hours of the day. Like So if you're actually going after to fill the museum, you have to pay attention and do your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you sell stuff. You know, like you sell fruit. You sell different items. You sell your fish. You sell your, you know. So there's all these different things you do. Yeah. Get your villagers to come in. And then you try to, you know, you interact with them and you do different things with them. Like, they'll be like, hey, I borrowed this thing from so-and-so. Can you take it back to them? And you have to run across the village and find them and then give it to them. And so there's a lot of different little there, – I think there's something there for everybody <laughs> is what's cool about it. You know, okay, like so – I get so, into the fishing and stuff. So so, so, so what about this as, like, a amiibo functionality for potential, like, missed opportunity if they did create the game you wish they had made? Like, yeah. scan a, you know, they've got, what is it, two, three hundred of those Amiibo cards now? Like, I don't even know how many they are. Each, each series is a hundred, so if they're going into the fourth one, they're getting ready to go into four hundred. All right, so they got four hundred cards. That is a lot of programming for functionality to program in. Mm -hmm. So, like, what if you scan that card, that character comes to your town and gives you a task, and, like, it, and it just randomizes whatever item you would end up receiving for completing that task. So within the game, I don't know if, like, there's certain things that are more useful than others, like, to have, mm -hmm. but, like, just, it randomizes it, but, but, like, the main, most important characters, like, the KK Sliders, Isabel, you know, uh, like, the ones they ended up making figures for, those cards would give you something very specific to that character. Um, All right, listen, we're gonna, I just thought of something. We're gonna get you on Animal Crossing. This is how we do it. You can actually create hybrids, flowers, in this game. Oh, dear lord. So you would actually be able to do your real job in the game. <laughs> if you put, like, different color, different t color roses next to each other, you get a different hybrid color. So that's where you got to go. That would be... Okay. That's, that's definitely for you. Except, except for I do that literally, like... Right behind this screen, there's plants. Yeah, so. that's okay, but you could do it in you could do it in you know in a in a sim formula. Now, the, the idea with the cards <laughs> is what you could do is one thing that everybody that plays Animal Crossing gets into is they have their favorite villagers, they have their favorite animals. The animals will just move out on you for no reason at all, and. As weird as it sounds, it kind of becomes heartbreaking because when you build this relationship with this character of going and talking to him every day, when they just up and leave on you, it's like, oh my god, how do I get them back? And you can't. There's no way get you can't get them back. 
Well, yeah, you put all that effort into your town, and you're like, yeah. oh, what the crap? Well, and you were talking about that on your other podcast the other day, where you were saying like, I would you joined like a bunch of like groups online. This was like mm-hmm. before Facebook, I think, and there was like, you know, I'll trade you. The, people were like, there's an underworld or like a black market yeah, for selling. Yeah, there's a black market for selling characters. So what but, they do is like, if if I have a villager that's going to move out. Let's say I have Stitches. Stitches is one of the top dogs in, in Animal Crossing. So if I have Stitches, he's getting ready to move out. And I walk up and I look in his house and he's in boxes, which means his house is boxed up. All his stuff is packed up. I would go on to this, a Facebook group, all these different Facebook groups, and say, I have Stitches in boxes. I'm going to put him up for auction for two hours and the highest bidder wins. And like, literally... Like- Physical money. No, like Bell, people, no, no, no not, not real money. Not real money. Oh, okay. Okay. It's not that, it's not that crazy. <laughs> okay. so people, but if you get to that level, I'm out, man. I'm not. Yeah, no out. doubt. Man. Yeah. But it was Bells, which which is in game currency. Oh, okay. Okay, so, okay. And literally, like, you could, if you had a good solid character, you could sell that character for like 100,000 or, or 100 million Bells. Like, I've seen it get up to that much. And wow. that's just insane. Like I don't even want to sit there all day and watch someone drop that off at my house all day. Like, really, it's ridiculous. That, that's so, crazy. so the idea is, if you had the cards, if one of your favorite villagers left, you could scan that that character back into your game. Yeah, and get so them back to be found. Or you scan a card in, and it locks them in, so they can never leave. And that way, you have them. You know, that would be kind of good. Yeah. Okay. So, but maybe have it so that if you can lock them in, mm-hmm. make it so there's benefits to changing out your townspeople. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So other other missed opportunities with Nintendo. Uh, we talked about the different shaped bases that could have been a thing, but it wasn't. Um, <sighs> Come on. Is there anything? Is there any bigger missed opportunity than two games? Star Fox, a, no, a new Star Fox line of Amiibo. They didn't do that. That's a to me. That's I'm, a. I'm still mad about the canceled R wing. I don't even, like. They're mad. They yeah. didn't do it because they they couldn't get it to transform properly. They no, just they didn't do it because they were afraid. We, they were afraid the kid was going to hurt themselves with it. Because oh, it, was it sharp? Yeah, it was sharp. So they were afraid. Listen, ninety percent of the collectors don't even take them out of the box anyway. <laughs> what are you worried about? Like, um, come on. Yeah. No. So, Pokemon tournament and Star Fox. Yes. Like, Pokemon tournament. They could have done a line of just the characters in the game. And people would have been rabid for more, but they would have understood there's too many to do figures for everything. So just give them the characters in the game. Like, mm. this, and this is a good segue into finishing up this little mini segment into the next part, which is amiibo functionality. And w- this week we didn't actually play through any. We don't have any footage from games or anything to show you guys. But what we were going to talk about is what we liked and our favorite amiibo functionality, and finishing up this uh, missed opportunities like. Mario Kart, all we got was costumes. Granted, like they're really cool costumes, but mm-hmm. you know, and I grant, I understand that that was like an an add-on sort of thing, yeah. like last minute for Mario Kart. Yeah. It wasn't designed for that. But like Star Fox and Pokemon Tournament. But like, see something. But see that. Okay, real quick to bounce back to Animal Crossing. Yeah. So they patched in for Mario Kart Eight to have functionality. So why couldn't they patch in for an Animal Crossing game? To allow, like that's the mistake where I feel like they made. I always wondered why New Leaf didn't have any I, sort of yeah. amiibo functionality. That exactly. always seemed very weird to me. I feel like you could have made an update of something super minuscule. Yeah. Any reason to get people to buy an amiibo yep. before the game? I agree. And that game sold so much that yeah, that ups your um the amount of people that are going to buy the amiibo. Yeah. Like, right there. Off Absolutely. The back. Yeah. The other, the other one that that blows me away that they didn't do was Hyrule Warriors. Why they yeah. didn't put out special edition, you know, amiibo of Zelda figures. Like, especially when you already had Toon Link and you you brought in Tetra to it and you brought in the King, you know, like, dude, you could have had all kinds of, like, you could have done so much. And oh, Linkle, yeah. like, come on, you could, Linkle, why didn't they make it Linkle? Okay, I have an answer for that. Okay. And it's, it involves the future of amiibo, um, okay. which we'll get into in a little bit. But okay. remind me in a few minutes when we get there and I will tell you why I think they haven't put out Linkle, Tetra, the king of Hyrule, like why they left Hyrule Warriors alone. I know your theory, but we're going to get to that. I know it. Yes. I know it already. All right. All right. So <laughs> we have lots of missed opportunities, but 
let's stop bashing a little bit. Go a little more pop. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> what for you guys? What is your favorite amiibo functionality? That's why I keep turning around because I'm looking at my games. Like uh-huh. I don't know what's my favorite. I don't want to say Smash. I just don't want to cover Smash again. I mean, it, it is Smash. For, for, for me, it's it's the, my favorite is two Splatoon and uh, and Fire Emblem. I feel like they're the best too. You know, because with Fire Emblem, if you scan them in, you get to bring them characters in to be on your on your squad and 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 battle. And I'll tell you right now, Marth and Ike are badass, man. They're like beasts. So those I'm all about. And then, you know, with Splatoon, I like the fact that they gave us, like, uh, challenges and stuff to do. Because, honestly, like, the mini challenges that you're doing in Splatoon help you get better in the in the multiplayer, you know, campaign. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. Um, I noticed a big increase in my skill level from, you know, like last, or last episode, a few weeks ago, uh, we played through, and I played through the Inkling Boy, Amiibo stuff. Kyle played through the Inkling Girl, and uh, Y Rock played through the Squid. Um, and I'd already done the Girl, which is why I did the Boy. And I'm now comfortable using a carbon roller, or pretty much most rollers online. Whereas before, yeah. I was like, I don't know how to use this. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not comfortable, but I'm definitely better at a charger. I still yeah. hate that thing. God, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate them. I'm not a good sniper. I've tried. I see, and I thought you were. See, I totally thought you were going to say that you were a bad Splatoon player until you started listening to the Ink Strike podcast, and that just made you better. Uh, <laughs> no, no. It, it, okay, I wasn't a bad player. You can't suck up all the time. No, no. I am. I'm not a good video gamer in general. I'm not very good at video games. I love them, but I'm not good at them. I was just teasing. I'm just teasing. Well, no. So the thing is, the Ink Strike. I put down Splatoon and had. I will. If you, I will plug you because. <laughs> Podcast. That's all. And, it was. I was just trying to get a plug. That's all. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. So, and I listened to that, and I listened to Mark talk about, um, you know, the different guns, and I listened to you talk about different guns, and listened to you bitch about every stupid challenge they give you. Yeah. And uh, and so, I tried the uh, arrow spray, which was Bobby's favorite gun, and I just was like, okay, I can understand why they enjoy this game now, because I, you know, I played for like three or four days after I bought the game. You know when it first came out, and I was like, oh, okay, I played through the campaign. I liked the campaign. Yeah. I did the, the Amiibo Girl challenges, and then I played a little bit of online. I was like, oh, I don't like this. Um, yeah. It was still kind of glitchy and laggy, you know, right after it started. So it was still doing that, and I was like, I don't like this. So I put it down, didn't go back to it until I listened to the Ink Strike podcast. And there you go, Bobby. There's your plug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, I was there for the demos, for the betas, for when you could go on the weekends and play Splatoon before it was out, and that yeah. was what got my hype rolling, because I was like, this looks good, and then I played the beta all night, and I was like, I, my, next morning, I told my girlfriend, I was like, we are going to own this. Like, there is no way we're not having this. Yeah. I love this. And she even enjoyed watching it. That's like one of the few games I can have her actually sit and watch me and not get bored. Well, um, I did the same thing. I went through the, te- the global test fire, and... I played the first hour, and I was like, okay, I got you. I understand what you're doing here, and I, I shut it down. I was like, yeah, I probably still won't get it. And then I think it was like four hours between the next, between the first global test fire I played in and the next one. And by the time it was getting ready to come around, I looked at my wife and I go, I think I want to play again. And I'm like, this is strange. Like I'm getting an urge to play. I said, I'm going to play. So I jumped on and started playing again. I was like, when I got done, I was like, oh, I'm getting this thing. I'm in. I'm sold. I'm in. So then the first week I had it, I, I think I played it like the first day, and she looked at me and she's like, yeah, you need to buy that for upstairs on the other Wii U because I'm going to play too. <laughs> so we had to buy it on the second one, and we used to, then we could just play together. It was awesome. Nice. Yeah. As for right. my functionality, before we skip over this, um, yeah. I will throw out there that I like Twilight Princess's use of the Wolf Link for when you can save. Like, mm-hmm. that, was, that was a nice addition. Um, yeah. I wish that that could do more. But I won't get into bashing too hard because the cave is cool. It's not enough. It's just not enough. Um, my favorite one. This is a really loaded question. Um, obviously, I want to say Smash only because it's the one I use the most. Um, yeah. But I, I really uh, like the unlocks and the things that I got you and can still get you consistently in Hy- Hyrule Warriors. Honestly, I still feel like they could have expanded. There could have been more done. But the fact that it got you weapons you couldn't get in-game was nice. It was nice to get the spinner. That's actually one of the better weapons, in my yeah. opinion. Um, that was that was really cool. And that was one of the other games I've used Amiibo more consistently as well. Because a lot of them I'd use once or twice. You get kind of bored. And plus, once you use them for the skins, you obviously don't use them again. Like, if you have yeah. costumes or Mario Maker skins and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah. So kind of blending, and mine is Smash, hands down. Um, I'm like I said, I'm not a very good gamer. Uh, I really love Smash, and I love being able to fight against a computer that I can't beat consistently. Um, and so, like you know, that was we mentioned this. We've beaten this horse to death so many times now. Um, but you know, it's great that they added that because it gave you a way. Like you know, with melee and brawl in the original Smash 64, you would be able you would train up against level nines, and then you'd get good enough that you could beat them. And if you got good enough to beat them in the original 64, you were probably already good enough to beat them in melee with the same character. Um, and then same was true uh, true for Brawl, and same for uh, Smash for Wii U and 3DS. And so ha- having these amiibo that, like, the average Smash player, not a competitive Smash player, because they're on, like, a whole other level, but, you know, for the average person that's just going to pick up, play a few rounds, put it down kind of thing, having that level 50 amiibo that can just kick your ass... Like, even without equipment or all these special powers or modified movesets, like, a level 50 that's well-trained can beat, I'd say, 90% of the average Smash players. Yeah. That might be high, but, you know, just throwing out I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. And that's... It made the game more desirable for me to play because when I don't have a friend to play against, you know, there's only so much computer you could play against before you got bored. So... Um, I feel that. I actually just started playing Melee again because I got a new Wii a couple months ago, so I cracked up Melee, threw it in there, unlocked all the characters, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, there's, there's that. The end of that. Well, so, <laughs> so I actually got into the, uh, into the Brawl modification scene for a while before the Wii U came out and all that. So I had a modified Wii U where I could uh, modify the characters, have different skins on them, so I had, like, Fierce Deity Link. You could change the movesets. I have this one moveset that somebody created for Captain Falcon and Ganondorf where they have infinite jumps. They, you can, be, and you can move, use moves as fast as you can push them in. And so it's like you can fly across the screen. And it's just it's completely ridiculous. Um, I, I wish I had a capture card because I would totally just take a video of me just, like, having fun. But the problem with the modifying it is that when you finish the match, if you press the B button on, like, the U1, like, you know, ranking right. screen, if you press the B button, it does the attack. And so, like, you can watch Captain Falcon Falcon punch whoever he just beat. And if you do that, it the, the Wii just gets a black screen and goes, Meh, and you have to force shut down. But... Aside from that, it's, like, amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it, it's really good. <laughs> trying to, like, eat this and not spit it up everywhere. Yeah, you just, you just been <laughs> snacking the whole thing. My girl brought me DQ. She came walking down with it, and she, like, looked at me, and I was like, yeah, like, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> yeah, I want ice cream. <laughs> All right. So let's get into our final segment now, um, and that is kind of uh, a little mini if we ran Nintendo, which I'm, which is the main reason we brought Bobby on, and that's we want to talk about the future of Amiibo. Um, specifically, like, <laughs> what do we want there to be? What do you think would be a smart move for Nintendo's part? And Bobby, you uh, have gone into this in-depth. You did a whole podcast about it already. Yeah. Um, so... No, but I wanted to. I also part of the reason I wanted you on is a little twofold. I wanted to be able to yell at you in person rather than just yell at you at the radio. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm getting ambushed now. This is gonna be fun. This first off, I'm upset that Sean didn't wasn't on the show because at least he could defend me with. It's two on one right now. I don't know. I like the odds. No, no. I think Kyle's gonna side with you more than that. Okay. More than that. Okay. Probably. Okay. Good. 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 All right, so All right. what's your what's your issues? Let me hear your issues. Okay, so first off, Disney Infinity being bought by Nintendo will never happen. I didn't ever. say. Listen, I. Oh, okay, listen. Let's let's start. Let's back up. <laughs> it's if we ran Nintendo, what we would do. We're not saying that Nintendo is going to do these things. We're no, just I, saying that if we ran Nintendo, this is what we would do. I would if I ran Nintendo. If I was Reggie Filame. I'm going over to Japan, and I'm going, listen, we need to buy the license for Disney Infinity. It's a no-brainer. 
You're or actually, at the very least, like let's talk to Disney. Yes. And tear up. And I'm only I'm only saying that that's a possibility because now that the president has actually acknowledged that they're going to end up doing movies and they're actually working yeah. on that and they're going to yes. be animated and there's a possibility that hello you guys should probably talk to freaking Pixar. Yeah. Like, Pixar, exactly. I'm gonna feel crap. I'm just saying. Yeah. But that no, gives, okay. That so no, and so I understand your logic in wanting in like that would be a smart move, mm-hmm. but. Nintendo does not have the best track record of working with third parties. That's um, and that's that's my I guess from a realistic standpoint, I just as if if I was so if I was gonna run Nintendo, the thing I would do is that I would not approach them about Disney Infinity as a whole. I would approach them for particular characters and say like Okay, we want to bring in like obviously they're, they're not going to bring in like Mickey Mouse for like Smash like that's never going to happen. No. It's not Disney yeah, doesn't want not. you know their traditional characters fighting. Um, that's not what they do. But like Star Wars, I could totally see that being like brought on into like some Nintendo thing, um, you know. And and so that's that honestly that was my main complaint was just so, the ridiculousness. Okay, of, you got so, me picturing Samus at one end of a hallway. And Darth Vader at the other end of a hallway, yeah. oh. just like staring down. See, uh, okay, so. But anyways, I'm sorry. Here, here's my here's just to further so you understand my reasoning. Okay. Was because I feel like if you if you buy Disney, not buy Disney Infinity, because Disney's not going to sell. They're going to license you. They're going to they're going to give you the rights to license. So my idea behind that is this: everybody complains that Nintendo doesn't have a game that features their Amiibo. So if you could buy something that's already there, already owned... Here, here's the thing. You're coming at all these different angles. So, one, you, you, you have that killer app, per se, where it's that game that you have all these different characters you could put, and now all of a sudden you have you know Mario in... You know, a Star Wars world or whatever. You know, and mm-hmm. that would be awesome. Like people would flip out if you could use like Link to play in the Star Wars, yeah. whatever. Like you just said, like Kyle just said, like Samus and Vader and all that stuff. So it would be cool to have that ability to bring Nintendo characters into the Disney world, vice versa. That would be one. Two, all the people that are upset right now that they can't get Disney Infinity anymore. It's a big, huge move. It's a power move by Nintendo to say, you know what? You can still do this, and you're only going to do it on a Nintendo console. It's going to make yeah. people go, I'm buying a Nintendo console. For the people yeah. that do use it, you know what I mean? So it's it's a power move. And it's basically saying, like, we're here. You're not going to get this on Sony. You're not going to get this on Xbox. Only place exclusive to Nintendo. Well, that's, that's where the- I feel like... That's where I feel like it's a it's, it's a strong, bold move by Nintendo. I look at yeah. we we totally don't. It's never going to happen. Never in a million years is going to happen. But it's just again, it's it's make believe. It's me and it's me and Sean's yeah. way of just going. Because ultimately, this is why we did the podcast. We were tired of people going, "Oh, Nintendo's not going to E3 this year with anything but Zelda." They're stupid, and that's all they would say. And we were like. Do I feel they're stupid for not going with anything but, but Zelda? Absolutely. But here's my reasons. This is yeah. what I would do. And that's where it all came from. So yeah. it's more it's more of just saying, like, hey, we don't agree with, like, we, this is what we would do, or this is what Nintendo should do, and this is why they should do it. That's that's more or less where it's coming from. Right. All right. And so that's earlier I mentioned why they haven't put out Zelda, like, Linkle, Amiibo, and all that mm-hmm. stuff with Hyrule is this, Wars. Is this your whole Legend of Zelda is going to have one main Legend of Zelda line, and they're going to have their game under every character's name? Uh, yes, but it's a little different. So, okay. I think <laughs> they're going to announce a Zelda line of Amiibo at E3 with the new game. Possible. I agree. Because I, I, possible. That's probably possible. And so that's my E3 prediction, is we're oh. going to get a Zelda line, and whether it's, you know, awkward, if they're, like, you know, Link from Ocarina of Time or whatever, like or like Young Link or whatever. You know, like I don't think that's gonna happen per se, but I think we are going to get like Linkle, Ganon in whatever form he takes. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's what we'll end up getting with the Zelda Wii U NX, whatever they're calling it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are supposed to get the name at E3, I believe. But um, be better. Oh my God. I know, right? Like if they're giving us like 
That's all they're giving us is freaking Zelda. Just, just gameplay, nothing else. Yes. Yeah, I think they'll tell us the name of the Zelda. They're going to have to because they're going to want to start to differentiate. Like, right now it's being called Zelda U, and everybody knows it's going to be on NX. So it's like you got to come up with it. And I'm also so tired of people like, it has a title, it's Zelda U. And I'm like, where's the other half of your brain right now, buddy? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, come on. Yeah. So I think they're going to announce a Zelda line of Amiibo that center around that game. Um, as always, they'll work for other games too, but I guess this is a really big opportunity for them to really bring Amiibo back. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of gone down, like the hype is dead. I mean, That's really... their next hype line. That is it. I know, exactly. It's, well, that and they need to give us freaking Bayonetta and Corrin. Well, right. But... Yeah, but, I, but I think that if, ultimately, if they want to, seriously, let's be honest here. If they want to get the hype back up with Amiibo, and they want it to go through the roof, they need to they need to do Pokemon. Yeah, that's that's the one that would bring everybody and their mother in. Like the, the collectors would go, okay, I have this series I got to collect. The fans would lose their minds. You know? So, and that's what I'm wondering about. That is, I know like a bunch of Sun and Moon info came out today. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a whole new Pokedex where it combines with Rotom, and mm-hmm. it's a whole new entity. It's on the bottom screen now instead of on a menu. Um, it's, there's a whole lot more to it. You can scan QR codes now to complete your Pokedex. You don't have to find them all. That's yeah. a whole new thing. Well, with no, these... no. You could, you could scan Pokemon in via QR in Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby. Like, And the problem with it is that people found a way to code... QR codes, so it would give you, like, a level 100 Mew with, like, all these ridiculous stats, and so they shut it down and got rid of that. Well, this is to complete... I think this is to complete the Pokedex, not to give you a Pokemon. Okay, so you you just scan a QR code for a particular Pokemon, and it gives you a Pokedex entry, but it does not give you the Pokemon. Right, so you can complete your Pokedex easier without having to find and see all of them in person. Okay, that but, makes sense. But what I'm getting at is the fact that they're adding all these new features, it would not surprise me if there was an Amiibo functionality within this new Pokedex in the game. I don't know what it would do. I don't know what their plans could be. That's there's a that's a huge, huge selection of opportunities that they could have for Pokemon just because it's such an in-depth kind of series. But to start e- just go halfway through the year and go to E3 and be like, here's a Zelda line, and hype all the suddens up here. And then a couple months later, um, once they kind of get through all the Zelda hype of this being the 30th year. Holidays. Whatever, Holidays. Once, once they get closer, yes. Then they would announce, hey, Sun and Moon's coming out. By the way, we have this Amiibo lineup or card lineup for Sun and Moon. And then that would take the Zelda hype and the Nintendo hype just gone. It would be yeah. out there. Yeah. And again, <laughs> short stock. Short stock, short, short stock, short stock. I th- yeah, I think you I look at it and you go, I think you look at it and you go, Pikachu, make a, make a million of them. You know, you <laughs> get something weird. I don't even know all the Pokemon. You get something stupid and you go, all right, we're going to do maybe 100,000 of these. You know, like you need to look at it and go, but there's so many popular ones that you could just put the popular ones up one after the other at the other and put out a lot of them and you'd be okay. Like I would go... I would probably put out the same amount of numbers they put out for the first series of Amiibo and keep it tight, you know. And, and well, I maybe a little bit more than that, like not. No, I wouldn't. Really? I wouldn't. No, because you know why? Because it, ultimately, a lot of people left. I would look at it and go. What I would do is I would have it set up where we can have another restock immediately. If they blow out through the roof, then you go, you know what, we'll have more in a couple months. Just relax. They'll right. be out. Especially considering Robin and Lucina came out a year ago and have yeah. not been restocked since. That's the issue. That was the issue bigger than anything. How okay. you, you put out you put out Amiibo and then your restocks happen a year later? Like, most stores, if you sell out of something within a month, two months, you have something there. So if they have a restock plan set up, so this way they go, okay, we're going to do tight numbers here, and then and then the other thing you could do is just do, if you really wanted to just sell out, do pre-orders for a month. Whatever the Whatever's pre-ordered, they make plus 10%, and then everybody's happy. 
Well, so my I think the issue with your plan of the restocks is like as soon as they do one restock, the hype's gonna die. And it's like, oh, more is coming. Even if it's not a huge restock, but it is a restock. Like, you know, I feel like if people know the restock, restocks are coming, then they're gonna be like, oh, I don't need to rush for wave one or for this one, unless they started doing like first edition on the package. Yeah, and yeah. that well, even the restocks were low. I remember wave. Oh my gosh, was it four? Four was the worst. It was whichever one Marth came back. Marth came back for wave yeah, that was four. four. Yep. Wave and four. I, but they only had like a box or two at every store. Yeah. So only the first few people in line got one. I was fourth in line. I got the fourth one. I went insane because I hadn't had them yet. Like yeah. if they keep restocks low like that, that still yeah. keeps the hype and demand up. True. True. So Bobby, you're not talking restocks like the scale of what happened at Best Buy when. It just flooded Marth everywhere. No, 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 no. no. I, that, that was just too much. Yeah, that I was, was way happy. Too much. I was still, still on shelves in some cities. See, I think yeah. people. See, here's the thing. Like, I think, I think the customizers were happy. I think you guys were happy because it was like, hey, I got a variety of new stuff to paint, new stuff to jam lights in, and stuff like that. Where, um, the common person was just like, okay. We don't need this many. Like, it, I although a lot of those restocked ones blew out the doors. Like, Little Mac was there for maybe a week and gone. Yeah. Like, he blew out fast. So even the massive wave of villagers that came back, I can barely find them anymore. Even though really, I can still find, yeah, I can still find them in my Toys R Us if I go in. Yeah, my yeah. Toys R Us has dozens. They're just sitting there. Yeah. Nice. Um. Oh, so speaking of this is. Short little tangent. So during my travels while I was gone, I went uh, the second night where of the actual trip that I was leading, I went to a Walmart to get us some supplies for the rest of the trip. And I was like, well, I'll check it. And I was in Jasper, Texas, this tiny little town. Like, I'm pretty sure the population is like less than a thousand. Um, it's like, it is this tiny little town. I went to the Walmart, which is like the centerpiece of the town, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. And so I went to their video game section. First off, they had like five or six of the Mario Maker bundles with the modern Mario in it. Um, and they were just sitting there. And then on top of that, they had uh, like three gold Mega Man bundles, uh, mm-hmm. like yeah, four, Twilight like Princess, four or five Twilight Princess bundles, all the Animal Crossing bundles, like all those bundles. They had everything. Their Amiibo stock was ridiculous. They had, they still had Little Mac. They they didn't have like Robin Lucina, unfortunately, but they had like Little Mac, uh, you know, all the common ones that are easy to find. They had Chic in box that was in decent com- condition, and if I had had a way to get it home without getting destroyed, I would have bought it. <laughs> I I hate that I can't find her. Like I have her, but people want that duo, the dual one that I make. Uh huh. I, I can find Zelda everywhere, and I'm like, That's yeah. no problem. But I got no. Amazon all my Sheiks. No, so and they, you know they had Splatoon three packs. They had everything. the The thing that blew me away, they had frickin' um, oh, frick, what's it, what's it called? Uh, they had Silver Mario still. Like they had like everything. I couldn't believe it. But what I bought that made me really happy is they had one copy remaining of Bayonetta two with the original Bayonetta included for yeah. Wii. And yeah, I've, it's good. I've, I've been looking for that everywhere, so I could. I've never played either of those games, and so I bought that. So I was They're very awesome. Yeah. They're good games, man. You're gonna hate me, dude. Oh my god, Bobby, you're gonna hate me. You're gonna hate me. Why? Sorry, Bobby. But I have that. <laughs> but I have it sealed. Oh, what a piece of art! <laughs> Why would you have it sealed, man? Because if I really want to play it, I ever get down to the point where I'm like, man, I really want to open this and play it. I'll just, I'll buy another one. Cheaper, or or you could just buy it for me when I'm done. Do you or have that. okay? Here's here's the test of your collector. Do you have Devil's Third? I freaking don't, man. How could you not have that? I told you you're gonna hate me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, man. That's the one you gotta get. All right, so back back on topic. Um, sorry, I just wanted to tell. I was really excited about that find. Um, because good find, but that. Yeah, apparently if you live uh, about an hour north of Houston, there's some uh, pretty incredible amiibo <laughs> hunting, apparently. Um, never would have guessed that the town of Jasper, Texas... Um, it's the old towns, man. So, so just to explain how tiny this town is, 
uh, in, the, in the hotel I was at, the woman, you know, I had the tour group, and the woman at the desk goes, oh, are y'all here to go look at the trees uh, at the bottom of the dam? And I was like, no. Um, like, is, she's like, well, that's like the coolest thing to do here. I'm like, okay. Jesus. <laughs> Try not to laugh, but like, eesh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right, anyway, back on topic. So, uh, the future of Amiibo. Um, I think we're going to get Zelda Line at E3. At E I almost said EU. Um, <laughs> uh, Zelda Line at E3. Uh, Bobby talked about, like, what he would do. Like, we talked a little bit about what we would do. Um, I re- you know, a Pokemon line, it's got to happen, and I feel like it's all on the Pokemon company being separate and them having, you know, a wad up places where the sun don't shine. A whole other reason why really hoping the Monster Hunter ones just go nuts because that will be one more thing that will make them go, okay, this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, Star Fox. I was... I haven't even picked up the game because I just... It's pretty I'm, good. I know you I'm, have no time to play, but I'm letting you know it's pretty good. Yeah, I have no time to play. Like, I'm trying to play through Uncharted 2 right now so I can play Uncharted 3 so I can play on Uncharted, <laughs> Uncharted 4. Good luck with that. Just play, play two, just play 2, skip 3. But I already know what happens in 3, so... Exactly. So skip 3. So play but 2 out, and then... I can't do that. It might, like, I can't do that. I want to, but I can't do that. You're not. Yeah. Yeah, so... But with Amiibo functionality with Star Fox, like, I feel like there's all sorts of stuff they could have done. I feel like... Listen, I feel like Nintendo is so hepped up with we have to find a reason for people to use these things. And I, at the end of the day, I really don't think it's going to stop people from buying them. Amiibo functionality is not a reason that people buy these things. No. Like, at the end of the day, it's really not. There are, I'm sure there are some people that go, oh, no, no, I have to have some good reason to use these things. But That's there's a good... Though. Yeah, there's a... Exactly. It's an excuse yes. for people that are adults buying these things and they want a reason to not be embarrassed. Just stop being embarrassed. Be like, own it, man. These things are awesome. Just be like, this is my opportunity to get a cool-looking Nintendo figure that I can't get anywhere else. And I think that's what holds them back. Like, not only that, like, who cares if the functionality is the same across the board? Like, if they put it out with Star Fox and it does something, so what? If it does, like, if if they put out Slippy and, and all these, and Peppy and all these ones, and they all do the same thing, who cares? Just put it out. Just get it going. You know. Well, and, and so I feel like that. Like, what, there wasn't Nintendo saying like early on. They're like, they expected people to like Amiibo, like because of the functionality, not because like p- they weren't expecting people to collect them like in box. They, yeah, they, they were. They, yeah. they thought everybody was going to keep opening them, and then they realized, oh, people aren't collecting these because they want to use them. They're collecting them because they're figures of characters that we've never had figures of before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like I feel like that's a cop out because if that's not the case, if if the case was if you really feel like like that was a shock, then why are you why are you putting them silver tabs underneath them to stop people from using them in the package? Yeah, well, because like Disney well, Infinity forced people to get too. Yeah, Disney Infinity didn't do that. No, uh, Skylanders doesn't do it. Shovel Knight didn't do it. Right, and so, that's an amiibo, and they actually went to Nintendo. Yacht Club said they went to Nintendo first and said, do we have to put this silver tab underneath of Shovel Knight to block out? And they said no. Now, if you're telling someone else you don't have to do it, why are you doing it? That's a good question. I was actually about to ask, though, because I've, I've never touched Disney Infinity. I've never touched Skylanders. I've never touched Lego. Um, mm. Can you save information into their, no. into their things? No. It's only Nintendo, right? Yes. Because yes. that is my assumption as to why they silver tab it. You can't save info into the Shovel Knight one either, and they never planned on being able to, which is probably another reason why they weren't upset, which is my concern as to maybe that's why. But, like, I don't see anyone walking into a Walmart and, and scanning. scanning it in and starting to battle that character and then taking it home and being like, no, this is mine. I scanned it. It works, obviously. Like, I could, yeah. like maybe once in a blue moon some jackass is going to try and do that. Yeah, I worked yeah, in retail. Yeah. They try. But yeah. it's not enough to make you put that thing down there, like... Yeah. People don't aren't that neglect to their or aren't that negligent to their amiibo area of their store. And if it, if that's the case, like you can always put them in glass cases. 
You can always tell them, like, put them with the games. Like, lock them up. Well, in a lot of times, like, the bundles, they do that because there's a game in the bundle. Yeah. But, or if they're your Best Buy, you put that, like, spider thing of death yeah. mm-hmm. that ruins any hope of collectability. Um, but I just thought of something. I really wanted to bring up to Bobby because I heard on his podcast about Mario Kart. Here we go. Uh, I'm All not right. trying to fight you. I'm actually in agreement. Okay, 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 okay. Um, okay. See, I told you you'd like Kyle. The, okay. the missed opportunity. It goes into missed opportunities. I'm sorry we keep going back to that. Um, no, it's fine. The whole, when you guys were talking about how you wish that you could scan a character and get, you know, a level, like everything, one of everything that conspired with that character. Yes, yes. Which and I, 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 I love that too. That was my favorite part. The whole, every character coming with a level, though, was a little bit much, except if they came as four packs, and then you got a Grand Prix. Because if you just got one level, and then you went to play that on Mario Kart, okay. uh, how would you select it in a Grand Prix status? Like, you can't punch it in. You could well, only ever do it. Did this? Um, okay, so like what if they did this? Versus. So let's, let's do an amendment to this. Let's do Kyle's amendment. So what if I bought Pac-Man, right, and I get a Pac-Man level? Because this is going to make people do more, all right? What's the most annoying? What what forced you to buy Amiibo when you, you were have blank America? slots that are shadowed out that you can't click? Yes, through. yes. So now what you do is you go, here's a cup, but you need to buy four different Amiibo to completely open up that cup. You're going to go buy them because you're going to want to play that cup. Yeah. So that's what you do. You basically say, like, if I buy a Pac-Man, I get a Pac-Man level. If I buy a Sonic, I get a Sonic level. You know, and you get the other stuff, all the other bells and whistles, like the fire suit and, and all that stuff. But if you get all four, then you get this cool-looking cup. that work for you? Okay. Yeah, all right. I, I have another thing. <laughs> I have another idea. Like, I would totally be behind that. But I have another thing that might work. Um, that I would like to see if they did like Mario Kart 9 or Mario Kart X, whatever that they end up calling it. You know, well, X would be 10, but they don't. Nintendo doesn't know how to count anyway. Um, <laughs> they're not as bad as Microsoft, but um, <laughs> um, anyway. Point being, what if so? Nintendo you have your... can, listen, listen, stop, stop. Nintendo can count. They just can't name things. There's a difference. No, they need to stop using the word new. And they're bogus. Like, we use the word new because it's exciting and it gets people to buy the title. Like, they would buy the title if it had a different title anyways. Like, yeah, stop exactly. trying to blame it on the title. Like, yeah. All right. It's a good All right, so, moving on. So here's my idea. You have your figure, right? So sticking with the Pac-Man example, you get your Pac-Man figure. Mm-hmm. You know, you scan him in. You get, your, you get uh, the suit, right? Mm-hmm. What if you also, in an Amiibo package you have an Amiibo card that goes along with it that's like, not not like a small Amiibo card, like like basically the backer. The back, car, back card is also like uh, an Amiibo chip, or has an Amiibo chip in it, kind of, or not the, maybe not the packaging per se, but something that you can use to help display it better. And that is, and it's like the course that unlocks, like on one side, and then like the character on the other. So it would be like the Pac-Man course is unlocked by the Amiibo card. And so that way you separate it out, kind of thing. Or you oh, could yeah. do, or you could do like a booster pack of courses. Yeah. Another thing I was gonna say um, to add on to Bobby's other idea though too is instead of getting the level with every amiibo, if you only got all four levels in a Grand Prix once you got all four characters, so you can get each character cool. and get yeah. their character as a gameplay, get their card as gameplay, their other accessories, etc. But in order to get their level, you have to get all four of that character in that cup, basically. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, well, I, would, I like it. Oh I like my god. That. So I, I hope they do this with nine. Also, just right now, a random thing right, is nine better be amazing because eight is the official. I listen, can't get over how great should, it is. It should be done, and it should be Nintendo Kart or Smash Kart. Because once yeah. they put Link in there, I was like sold. I wanted more. And but yeah. yes, if, if, if also Sean, earlier when we were talking, to, oh sorry, you're talking. No, no problem. If Sean was here with us right now, he'd be freaking out, telling you how much he loved your idea, and it'd be like the greatest <laughs> idea ever. <'Cause, laughs> He'd be like, dude, why didn't we think of this? I'm thinking, I don't know, Sean. Well, you didn't have me on the freaking Amiibo podcast, or the Amiibo podcast, so, I mean, didn't even ask me. Listen, where were you at? Fair enough, I was in the middle of nowhere. Where Thank were you. you? Yeah, you were, like, in East Bumble. You know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Let's wait, let's wait for Mason to get back. 
Well, you could have you could have waited to do the Amiibo episode. Let's be real. Like, well, we actually, honestly, we did that one because we were supposed to have a guest on that we thought would really be that would enjoy it, and then it never panned out. Ah, uh, well, so well, that's unfortunate. But yeah, so eventually you're gonna have to do another one. Um, and when it, when you do, I, I I was hoping to be invited, but that's cool. I, you know what though, you went against everything I said, so no. But Kyle, you're more I than welcome. I did not go against more. everything you said. Enjoy. Just Disney Infinity. Disney Infinity I, was the only thing I didn't think was a good idea. Because it, because the fact of the matter is, is if I ran Nintendo, I want yes men around me, and you are not a yes man, so you got to go away. I'm sorry. I just played <laughs> Devil's little, Advocate, so you think things truthfully. <laughs> I'll just mess with you. Calm down, Mason. It's okay. It's not. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think the future of Amiibo could be very bright, but Nintendo has to play its cards right. It yeah. really does. Um, it's yeah, it's teetering right now. Yeah, yeah. Because it could, it could go the way of Disney Infinity, but with you know Disney Infinity collapsing, that's a big gap in the market that Nintendo could fill. They really could. Yeah. The sad thing is, is like. You know Nintendo right now is sitting there saying to themselves, like, why do we listen to people? Why do we listen to the media and everything? Like, the hype level was through the roof on these things. We were still selling. We were selling out on everything we had. Everything was good. We let people convince us that we needed to go a different direction with these, and now they have a bunch of them sitting on shelves. I think behind closed doors, they got to be kicking themselves, I think. Yeah, for the Animal Crossing. Well, honestly, I feel like there. I feel like the Animal Crossings would not have been under would would not have been oversupplied if they'd given us a good game to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. still the main problem, for sure. Like I really or don't just, like. Or just if Amiibo Festival was cheaper, honestly. Like if it was a little less money. Yeah, that but also Amiibo, might be a little more. Think about it, and there was, was a lot really, to it, but. Yeah, but was it really that expensive when you when you think about it? And you have you're getting two Amiibo, which is thirty bucks. You're getting three cards, which was a dollar a piece, is essentially what the cards break out to be. So what that's just uh, thirty three dollars. So you're getting the game for what fifteen bucks? It was sixty dollars for the bundle. But that's still thirty dollars for a game. So yeah, yeah. thirty dollars. That's still thirty bucks. It's still a budget title. I mean, it's still it's still that's it's fair. Still cheaper. That's fair. but I think but I think that they should, what they should have done is they should have said. We're going to give you the game. They should have gave the game for free. And I think they probably would have done better with it. Maybe a three-pack of Amiibo and cards and then a free game. Well, you figured they had the three-pack of Amiibo, right? They had the KK with the two llamas or whatever they are. They should have done that with the, you know, and gave the game for free. Yeah. Thirty four ninety nine and then free. I don't understand why they put KK with the llamas that nobody cared about. Because why everyone not? cares about KK. Yeah, because people want KK, and they knew that people would buy KK and not worry about, you know, they knew that those two characters were way too new that people probably wouldn't buy them. Yeah. Okay, so, like, if they packaged them, the llamas individually, they wouldn't have sold. Probably not. bundling them with the KK, it made them sell. Yeah, do you know how many of those llamas I see used at GameStop, but you never see a KK? Yeah, people are, yeah, people are just buying them and turning them back in. Yep. Which I have them all. I love them all, man. I don't, I don't turn them in. I just bought one once to use KK's guitar for a custom, so now I just have this little KK sitting here with nothing. I don't know what he's doing. What is wrong? And I gave away the other two. You are... Well, so I bought uh, the little pink (laughs) owl for my girlfriend because she works with raptors, so, you know. There you go. Nice. But aside from that, you know, I haven't touched (laughs) Animal Crossing at all. Um, Maybe one day I'll play New Leaf, but it's usually... It's not... Again, it's not my forte. It's not my style of game. I, I, I'm willing to try it, Bobby. I don't have anything against Honestly, the actual I was, listen, I'll be honest with you. I was I was totally in your camp. I was like, this is not my style. This is not me. I'm not playing this game. I don't want nothing to do with it. And then when on the GameCube version, that's what mm-hmm. wrote me in. When, when in the GameCube version, you could actually unlock original NES games. So part of what the villagers would give you, like you randomly you could walk up to somebody and give them you know, their CD player that they lost, and they would give you back an NES game. You take it into your basement, you drop it down in the basement, you click it, and you would actually play it. And it was like a virtual console game built into the GameCube game. So my buddy 
try to convince me to play Animal Crossing. I'm like, I don't want nothing to do it. He's like, dude, you can play old school games. I'm like, what's old school? What are you talking about old school games? He's like, you can play Mario Brothers, Punch Out, all these. I was like, you're full of crap. He's like, buy the game. I'll give you my town. You can go into my basement in my house, and I have all the games there unlocked. Go play. Dude, I sat there for two hours just playing all the different Nintendo games. And then I was like, man, i got to unlock these for my own town. So I started running around trying to unlock them. Next thing you know, I got hooked on this game because I realized this game is really good. You know, it, there was a reason for me to play the game, and it was a decoy. You know, the, 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 the NES games was a Trojan horse for people. That was a way to get into people's systems, and then people fell in love with the game. And then it's just... It's a lot of fun. You get hooked on it. I put like 500 hours into it. New Leaf. Oh, crap. Yeah. Plus it's more, which makes it so much more accessible all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Animal Crossing to my backlog of games. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing Pokemon. I'm currently playing Pokemon Red whenever I can because I've got, you know, my Pokemon 3DS and then I've got my Majora's Mask 3DS and... I'm playing yellow on the Majora's Mask, red on this one, and then once I beat them both, then I'm going to go play through blue and just blast through with my level 100 Pokemon. Um, and then I've also got Uncharted 2, 3, and 4. I still haven't played Arkham Knight, um, which is the whole reason I bought my PS4. Same reason I bought mine, and that game was amazing. Yeah, it was good. Um, I also, let's see, what else do I have? Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, Xenoblade Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles X. The problem is you don't just have a backlog of games. You games. have a backlog of 50-plus hour games. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. not like they're quick to play. It's not like, start, go, go by Star Fox, start simple. That's a six-hour yeah. game. Listen, <laughs> do, do yourself a favor. Stop going on three-week trips and play games. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just, there's other things... I also, you know, brew beer in my spare time. So, uh, I've, well, there you go. Yeah. Get drunk or play video games. Priority. Yeah. I don't know. I, well, I don't I'm brewing. I'm not drinking. I well, I am drinking, but not enough to get me drunk. But, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. I hear you. I got a backlog, too. Also, I just bought Doom. I'm just making the backlog bigger. Oh, I've stopped buying games entirely. Um, I still haven't bought Uncharted 4. I pre ordered it, but I never bought it. So, I'm kind of just like. Eventually, I'll get to it. Um, but yeah, so I think the future of Amiibo looks bright. Um, yeah. it, it, it could. It, I'm also a little hesitant because I know Nintendo likes to uh, like likes to come up with these wacky ideas that totally surprise us and seem to come from left field. And then people are like, "Okay, I can get behind that," but at first they seem insane. Like you know, Zelda is the only thing going to E3. But you know, I'm really hoping with the new leadership. They're gonna take it to somewhere like really amazing. Well, that did change today. Did they, you see? Yeah, you, mm, go. They yep. did announce that there's gonna be a day two, and they're gonna stream uh, Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon and uh, Monster Hunter and a bunch of different games. So, okay, they, they could come out and be like, "Hey, we're gonna do a day three as well," because they typically do three days. I I, th I think they're just keeping things under wraps. Yeah. You kind of keep the leakers hard. off balance and, and all that stuff. Yeah, oh. the freaking leaks kill them, which you did a whole episode on yeah, uh, yeah. your podcast about that. But, mm. like, the leaks are awful. But one thing... Oh, I had one more thing that I wanted to mention, and then we can wrap it up. The, yeah, the mobile stuff, in particular. Mm. Mitomo was, like, the hype was there, and then it, it just kind of fizzled. I um, deleted mine today. I was... Really 780 something megabytes that I just I wasn't using it enough to it was the biggest app on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's slow to load. It's honestly like it's equivalent to the 3DS as far as load times, if not worse. Yeah. Like it's just it's a honking app and it's there's not that much to do and like I've never been been a big fan of like Tomodachi life anyway. Mm. So like, you know, for me it just doesn't offer much, but that's me personally. I know a lot of people that love the app mm -hmm. and really love doing it. Um, but I think with, and I mentioned this before, with the fact that most smartphones have NFC readers in them. Yeah. Amiibo opportunities, really, like, scan your Amiibo, it's perfect, like, they love to do Amiibos as costume unlocks. Scan your Amiibo, get a costume with that why character. Couldn't, why couldn't they do an Amiibo checklist that's 
you, you take it, you scan it in, and you have it. You know, like that's you take it. You can charge ninety nine cents if you want to, or give it away for free. And you just have an app. You scan in your amiibo, and there you go. You have I, your list. I like that. I hear I hear the haters now. I can't even get Robin and Lucina. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. That's yeah, that's their problem. It is. They can order from Japan just like I do. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, but I wanted this. Oh, unless you got something more, go. No, like with the mobile stuff. Like I like that was a, something. I really hope they'll implement Amiibo into the mobile stuff. It's in possible. The it's possible. I don't think it's likely, but it's it, there's a possibility. Yeah. Did you guys... I don't know if this is old news. Really quick, just want to say this. Um, mm-hmm. I saw it today or saw the interview. Um, did you guys see why NX was pushed back to 2017? That's BS. No, uh, that's a rumor, dude. That's a rumor. I don't okay. believe it. Because they're trying to say that it's VR and this and that and the other. And Not, e- not even the VR things would get me. But, the, the, but the, they put the delay on it and it's not going to be ready. And Is that, that what just, you're talking about? It was, but not just the VR thing. I don't believe the VR thing. Yeah. VR is too expensive. It's too. What heavy. else? Do you, what do you think? Um, what do you think is not just VR, but also the accessory? Like obviously, we already knew they were probably like not probably, but we were we were hoping they weren't. But how like they had the Wiimotes, and then they had the gamepad, and that there's some other accessory supposedly attached to VR, but that I don't I still don't believe that. Um, but some other sort of accessory that I'm hoping... I still am hoping for a classic controller. If it has a screen on it, that's fine. But something that feels more classic and not box. I, I mean, people love the GameCube controller. It is it is one of the best feeling controllers ever no. made. Yes. Pro, they need to come with a pro controller and that's it. Gamed over. Done. I think it's a pretty even tie. I love the pro, but I still yeah. love GameCube too. Like I don't think GameCube's a bad controller at all. It's no, I think really nice, and the buttons are all really close, which is what I want. Yes. Like the buttons are weird, though, man. Okay, I'm I'm okay. So I'm okay with like the classic controller, especially like the the what is it, the classic Pro or whatever it is for the yeah, Wii U, the, the, the pro. nice wireless black one, and yeah, the charge on that thing lasts forever. Yes. Like okay, it's great. I've charged mine twice since I bought my Wii U. <laughs> dude, can like, I tell you? Dude, I'm constantly charging my PS4 controller, and I hardly ever can charge my my Wii U Pro controller. That thing just sits there, and I'll pick it up, and it'll be dusty as hell, and I'll turn it, and it fires right up. I'm like, this yeah. is insane, man. I don't understand. <laughs> it's like black magic in that thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so with the controllers, like, if they, I'm fine with the button layout, especially of the Wii U Pro. I think it was, which it was a little more like ergonomic. It's a little bulky. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not not nearly as bad as the Xbox controller, but you know, it, it is a little bulky. If it was a little bit more ergonomically friend, or ergonomic friendly, whatever you call it. Um, if they if they did the gamepad. Or the, the you know the, the the GameCube controller, as long as they did better buttons. Like if they took the buttons off the Pro controller and slapped it on there, I'd be fine with it. Well, which well, buttons that, bother you? No, is it well, because you have the big green button, and then you no. have the. Because I'm looking at it now, you get the green button, you have the, the smaller red button, and then mm-hmm. you have two gray buttons on the outer side with the nub stick. See, yeah, okay, yeah. I think. So, I think the B button's weird. I think the B button should wrap like X and Y do because the, I like their shape only because I have to lean my thumb to touch it. I don't have to move my thumb, whereas yeah. most controllers you have to move. That one, the GameCube was all lean. So, and the other thing, my issue is the buttons on the Pro Controller are taller than on the GameCube controller. I don't like tall buttons because it feels like you have to push really far to get it down, and you, I feel like I can't be as quick with my movements. But I do like being... And actually, Kyle, I'm kind of the opposite. Even with like a, a, a PlayStation controller or the Pro controller, I just roll my thumb. I keep it at a diagonal between the four buttons, and I roll back and forth. No fair. But I like I like what you're saying, Kyle. It, like I said, I'm looking at the controller right here. So I like what you're saying. Where if they just moved, they did that kind of wrap around with the B button, then you would have a big green button in the middle with three smaller buttons on the outer side, and then you can kind of just roll your finger to where you want to go, that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. That well, so bad. here's why that'll, that definitely will not happen. Oh, of course. Their new logo rebrand thing. Yeah. The, with the, the four buttons. Yeah. Already, we're locked into that. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is okay. No, it's fine. Yeah. I, I hope 
the buttons will not be ridiculously tall. I know that was a huge complaint with the Xbox controllers when it came out with the Xbox One. And so everyone's like, oh, the buttons are way too tall, and it's a pain in the butt, or whatever. The other thing we need is better triggers on the on the top and back. Yeah. Especially, yeah. like, Splatoon. Like, pressure-sensitive triggers. Honestly, like, the PS4, like, the triggers on that, They're love perfect. them. They're yeah. perfect. They're perfect. I love my PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. And, honestly... The PlayStation 4 controller is, aside from having terrible battery life, is in the stupid touchpad thing. And I'm like, that was... Yeah. I don't know what that I, I was. only like it when a keyboard pops up on my screen. Because <laughs> yeah. then you just drag and click on stuff. You don't yeah. have to... Yeah, yeah. Freaking direction. Well, that's fine. But, like, aside from that, like, the ergonomics of this are, like, almost identical to the GameCube controller, the way it feels, but the buttons are better laid out. Yeah. Yeah. So, if they, if they did this, but... Uh, but Nintendo, perfect. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that close. It can be spread out and have a screen in the middle. I don't care. Yeah. But it needs to feel good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, anybody else have anything they want to add? Future of Nintendo and Amiibo? I'm good. I'm good. Um, well, I guess that's it. Uh, I'm Mason, a.k.a. Amiglos. And I'm Kyle, a.k.a. Mr. Space Eater. And I'm Bobby, the Nintendo Guru. And we are scanning out of Touch Base Podcast Level 12.